Dear students, in the preceding lecture, I explained you the main characteristics of environmental goods. Environmental goods uh, are non rival and non excludable in nature in most of the cases. And I also discuss what is ecosystem and what are the ecosystem services. So, ecosystem services can be classified into four categories provisioning services, supporting services, regulating services and cultural services. And I have explained in detail all these four types of ecosystem services and ecosystem services are also complementary in nature as well as competitive in natures and ecosystem services can be intermediary and final in natures. So, I have already discussed uh, the intermediary services and final services that are provided by the environment and I also explained you the main services which are provided by the environment. In this lecture, you will study about uh, the complementarity as well as substitutability among these various kinds of ecosystem services and you will also study about value, uh, how these uh, ecosystem services are valued or measured and also you will study about the key issues related to environmental ecosystem services and uh, what kind of measures uh, we can initiate to sustain the ecosystem services. These services are complementary and competitive in nature. So, therefore, there is some sort of trade off between uh, one form of ecosystem services and the other form of ecosystem services. Mostly the trade off can be established between uh, provisioning services and other services. So, if uh, we are extracting more natural resources to satisfy our needs of industries, needs of the consumers, then less uh, uh, resources will be available for providing the other kinds of services like regulating services, cultural services, etcetera. So, you can say that these kind of services are competitive in nature, but uh, uh, these services are also complementary in nature and if we are focusing on regeneration of forest resources and uh, uh, if uh, forest resources are providing uh, certain kind of uh, carbon sequestration and other resources, then they also provide some complementary services like cultural services. So, not only uh, uh, the ecosystem provides certain kind of regulating and supporting services, but at the same time these regulating and supporting services are also closely associated with cultural services and they have uh, some uh, complementarity and if we are uh, focusing more on uh, generating the more supporting services, regulating services, more may be the cultural services. Like for example, uh, excessive discharge of waste material into the ocean may reduce the capacity to provide habitat for fish stock. So, that is uh, competitive in nature. So, if uh, we are providing more waste into the atmosphere, then our aquatic life may be badly affected. Then these services can also be classified into two categories intermediate services and final services. Let me tell you what do we mean by intermediate services. In economics, when we estimate the value of final products, certain kinds of intermediary goods inputs are deducted and only the value addition in terms of final goods are considered in the 
production of GDP or GNP etc. So, semi finished products inputs they are not considered the total in the total production because they are used as input in the final product. In the same manner when we want to estimate the value of ecosystem services as we have already discussed that ecosystem provide different kinds of services, but some services may not be directly consumed by the end users. The services or goods which are directly consumed by the end users in terms of either direct values or indirect values etcetera, they are considered as final goods or services. While some services which are used in the process to produce the final services, they are called intermediate services and they are not generally considered while estimating the total value of environmental services which the society receives. So, therefore, the term terms have evolved from the economics discipline for accounting of ecosystem services, but uh, it is very difficult to estimate how much is the intermediate services and how much is the final services, but as a concept we can uh, understand it and uh, explain the difference between uh, intermediate products or services and final products and services. This millennium ecosystem assessment defined ecosystem services like uh, the services which are in the form of final goods or services consumed by the end users. So, benefits people exactly and ex, uh, received from the environment in terms of monetary value for direct or final consumption are termed as final ecosystem services such as fishery output. So, when we catch fish from the river, the fish value is the final product because that fish is directly consumed by the consumers. Similarly, when we get irrigation water that is also final product, but water uh, may also provide certain kind of processes or uh, other kind of services which are not directly consumed. So, they are termed as intermediary. Similarly, uh, so you can say that all provisioning services which we get like honey, timber or water, all these can be known as final goods or services. Intermediary services are often described as those ecosystem services with little or no direct benefit to the people as I already discussed. Uh, they may consist of biophysical structure and processes that maintain the ecosystem in a favorable state for provision of final goods like regulating services, supporting services. So, all are a kind of intermediary services which uh, help us to generate the final goods and services which are consumed by the society or human beings. Like pollination services is a intermediary services. However, a service can be both intermediate and final depending upon the circumstances like water water if you are directly consuming it is a final product, but water can also be used for other processes like uh, water also help uh, to produce various aquatic animals which can be used for our direct consumption. This graph tell us about the different kinds of values that these goods and services 
provide to the society. And these values provided by the environment can be classified into two categories, huge values and non-huge values. Further, we can also divide huge values into two categories, direct huge values and indirect huge values. Uh, indirect huge values means uh, mostly all the provisioning services uh, like uh, food, fodder, fuel, all are the direct values, water consumed by us, water used for irrigation purposes, power generated from uh, the water, all these are the direct huge values. But we also get indirect huge values and basic difference here is that when uh, we are getting the indirect huge values, then uh, the service we are consuming, but uh, these are mostly the intangible kind of things. When uh, we see the beauty of the nature, cultural services, when we draw uh, inspiration from the environment, they are indirect values. So, um, but here the difference is that when we use the direct uh, product, then quantity of product is reduced when we consume, but in case of indirect uh, values, the quantity remain intact or sometimes quantity cannot be determined. How much is the quantity of natural beauty? It is very difficult to, uh, to determine. So, in that case, we uh, consume these kind of uh, commodity indirectly and they provide utility to the society, but uh, uh, we do not extract their uh, quantities. Then non-huge values, this is also an interesting uh, things that sometimes the society also get value without consuming a product. So, here it is a very important issue, can we draw utility without consuming a product? In economics, you have studied that uh, when we consume a product, we extract the utility. So, extracting utility means consuming a product, but when we put utility into the matter, we get production. So, production means putting utility into the matter and consumption means extracting utility from the matter. But question here is, can we draw utility without consuming a product? If yes then you can say it is non-huge value because value is generated uh, without consuming a product. And uh, actually in case of non-huge value ultimately what do we mean by utility? That is happiness of course. So, if you can get pleasure, when we see the natural beauty we get pleasure that comes under the cultural services. So, can you get pleasure without seeing the product? without consuming the product? If answer is yes, then you can say you are getting value from this without consuming the product. So, in that sense, we can have three kinds of non-use values. One is option value. Option value means uh, today I am not interesting to use a particular service of the environment, but I may think to use it in future. So, so that is called option values like uh, uh, I may be not interesting to have a holy bath in river Ganga today, but I think that after 5 years or in future I may think uh, to go to, uh, to have a bath in the holy river Ganga. So, in that case uh, it is an option value and I will be happy if uh, the river Ganga is flowing uninterrupted and unpolluted. So, I will draw satisfaction that uh, river Ganga or for that matter any other river are flowing without uh, obstruction and unpolluted. So, because I may think to have uh, a holy dip in the Ganga in future. So, that is known as option value. Then another is bequest value. Sometimes we feel happy, we get pleasure that uh, we may not uh, use a particular service, but our 
future generation may use it. And for that matter, we would like to preserve our environment for the future generation. So, I am I may be willing to pay something for the cause of protecting our environment, protecting our river system because uh, our future generation may have access to these goods and services. So, that is called bequest value. Then another is existence value. Sometimes we get pleasure, we feel happiness that a particular ecosystem is healthy or a particular river system is flowing uninterrupted. So, we get pleasure mere existence and if someone would like to harm that ecosystem, we will feel bad and we will be willing to pay something uh, to pr protect or preserve the environment. So, that is called existence value. I can simply uh, give an example, there are many world wonders. So, if someone uh, attack on any of the world wonders, then you will feel uh, bad, you will feel sad and you will try to do something for protecting that world heritage. So, there are certain cultural heri heritage, natural heritage and if someone is destroying these natural heritage, then you will feel sad and, and you feel happy for mere existence of such kind of natural heritage. So, that is called existence value. So, non-use value can be classified into option value means we may use it in future date, bequest value we feel happy that a particular uh, resource exists, environmental resource exists because our future generation may have access to this and sometimes we feel happy for the mere existence of a resource or environment. Now, uh, as far as direct value is concerned, it is easy to determine the price of direct value. So, when, when we cut tree, sell it as a timber in the market, we know how much is the market price. So, uh, mostly the conjunctive use of various kind of product or extracted use of various kind of product, they are subject to the market condition. So, market can work in case of such kind of environmental product which are directly consumed by us direct value. But in case of indirect, it is very difficult uh, to determine the market. So, therefore, their values are determined by some various methods like travel cost method is used, uh, how much you are spending on travel to visit uh, natural heritage. For example, if you are going to Simla to see the natural beauty, how much you are spending on travel, so then uh, it is uh, estimated in terms of how much value you are attaching to a particular service, environmental service. So, travel cost method is used, time or opportunity cost is also considered. Uh, these are mostly for uh, direct uh, or indirect use of values. Contingent valuation method is a very useful method which is used especially for measuring the value of environment which are outside the market ambit because certain kinds of goods and services cannot be traded in the market because of the fact that these services are either non rival or non excludable in nature or there is no existence of market for such kind of product etcetera. So, in that case uh, uh, we use contingent valuation method and here we conduct the survey to know how much you are willing to pay for a particular service and based on these values uh, these services can be created. So, impact of socio demographic economic variables can be examined on how much you are willing to pay etcetera. And uh, we will make a detailed discussion on uh, these uh, methods of environmental valuation in detail. Okay, so, now let me raise certain issues which uh, needs 
some discussions for sustaining ecosystem services. Ecosystem services are threatened mainly due to two pressures. First is growth of scale of human enterprises like population growth, urbanization, industrialization, increase, increase in per capita uh, consumption of various goods and services, energy intensive lifestyle and effects of technologies to produce goods for human consumption. So, these are some of the important issues which are directly related to environment. For instance, uh, a rapid growth of industrialization across the globe has increased air pollution, water pollution and since air and water pollutions have increased, they are putting pressure on certain kind of ecosystem services. So, when we are releasing more waste into the water bodies, then river wa water ecosystem is badly affected, fish may die, consumption of fish may decline, livelihood of the people may be badly affected. So, this is one important issue, uh, how to deal with uh, uh, these kind of industrialization, urbanization and uh, uh, whether market based approach would be more effective or command and control approach would be more effective to preserve our natural resources. Second is a mismatch between short term needs and long term societal well being. So, we have to see what are our long term goal for sustaining our livelihood and what are our short term. So, uh, we can see a mismatch between our short term needs and long term well being and that is also an important aspect for discussion. Some of the human activities that directly affect the ecosystem services are first runoff pesticide, fertilizers and animal waste. So, pesticide, fertilizers and animal waste, they are not only affecting our soil, soil health is badly affected, water is polluted, but uh, uh, it also created the non point source of pollution for our water bodies. So, this is one issue. Second is pollution of land, water and air resources due to industrialization, urbanization or uh, excessive use of chemicals in agriculture etcetera. Introduction of non native species. So, sometimes there is an intrusion of non native species and that is affecting our ecology and biodiversity. Uh, you can see uh, in some forest areas, uh, non native uh, plants growth is increasing and then the original plants in the forest are badly affected and that is also creating uh, scarcity of water uh, in certain uh, forest ecosystems etcetera. Then uh, destruction of waste uh, land and overfishing is also uh, a major threat to the, our ecosystem services. Deforestation and soil erosion is another issue and finally, you can also talk about urbanization and industrialization. We have uh, you can observe that most of the industries are set up at the bank of rivers, you can see anywhere. So, so cities and industries mostly set up at the bank of rivers and they are uh, releasing the waste, getting water from the upstream, releasing the waste at the downstream and creating uh, pollution in the river and that is affecting the assimilative or sinking function of river. Finally, let me now discuss how to augment or how to sustain the ecosystem services. There may be various methods and uh, in detail we will make uh, discussion later on, but one is payment of ecosystem services. To give incentives to the various stakeholders in the conservation and management of ecosystem. So, local stakeholders like Gram Panchayat, NGOs, 
local peoples local livelihood is directly related to the ecosystem services but uh, uh, if you want to preserve these ecosystems and generate a constant flow of ecosystem services to the society then some institutional mechanism is required to be set up for payment of ecosystem services like just an example uttarakhand uttarakhand is a hilly state providing lot of ecosystem services to the entire nation but what the local people are getting in lieu of these kind of ecosystem services so can we think of providing some payments to the local people so that their livelihood may be protected so payment of ecosystem services is one uh, suggestion second is market based approach such as trade tradable pollution permits across the globe now environmentalists are propagating that market based approach can be used to solve the environmental problem so by pro, uh, providing uh, effective property rights and allowing the trades in the pollutions can also help to improve the efficiency in the production and consumption so the tradable pollution permits can be uh, promoted then developing the institutional framework and social capital for an effective self governing common property rights regime so tragedy of common is major issue so how to uh, develop a better institutional framework and generate the social capital so that uh, this common property or common pool resources can be effectively protected and then community participation in uh, preserving and sustaining the ecosystem services and last internalization of externalities externality as i already discussed is unintentional harm or benefit received by a person not directly involved in the activities uh, although positive externality may be desirable but whether externality is positive or negative both distort the market and the prices of the various kinds of goods are not reflected the true cost of this product due to the presence of externality so internalization of externalities either through polluters pay principle or some other mechanism is also necessary to preserve to protect to conserve our ecosystem so that our ecosystem can provide constant flow of goods and services to the society let me now take couple of minutes to summarize what i have discuss in this topic first i have discuss what what do we mean by goods what do we mean by environmental goods environmental goods mostly are non rival non excludable therefore it becomes very difficult to create market for these kind of goods we also discuss the different kinds of services which are broadly classified into four categories provisioning services supporting services regulating services and cultural services these goods and services also provide us different kinds of values and these values can be classified into huge value and non huge values huge values can further be classified into two categories direct huge values and indirect huge values and non huge values can be classified into three categories one is option value second is bequest value and third is existence value then i also briefly discuss what are the different kinds of methods that can be used to estimate the environmental values actually uh, broadly uh, you can classify these methods into two groups stated preference method and revealed preference method and like uh, travel cost method household production functions contingent valuation method these are the important methods to use uh, to be used to estimate the value of environment and detailed discussion will be held later on in a separate unit on 
environmental valuation. And in the last, I discuss what are the key issues related to sustaining the ecosystem services and how to uh, improve the ecosystem services through certain kind of interventions have also been discussed. Thank you very much.